Hi and welcome to this another exciting tutorial. Yes, we are on programming. And by the way, before I go any further, my name is Dwayne. Um, as I was mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, that we are on programming, and in specifically, we'll be looking at array, a brief introduction of an array as to what it is and the basic structure of an array. We will have other follow-up tutorials to basically give you a more in-depth understanding of an array. Now, um, so we are saying that an array is a highly useful structure that store variable data, data having the same data type. So let me pick up a bit bigger for you. So very important, we are saying that an array is useful for storing data and those data have to be of the same data type. Now, consider an egg tree. You know that you will be storing eggs in an egg tree, right? So that is the whole structuring of an array. That's what it's basically about. So if you are going to store some integers and for the person who might not be aware of data type, let me give a quick overview so you grab that knowledge quickly. Now, when we speak of data type, we speak of the various type of data that can be stored. All right, we have like our char, which like is for your character, like you say, give me initially have a, um, like dollar sign, percentage, those things are what we refer to as char. Same thing as our character. When we speak about string, now a string is like your name. Take for example, if I'm going to declare um, an array to store some names, including my name, I would declare array to be a string of string data type. Let's say if I'm going to declare an array to um, store the class, the student average, and various averages in the class, I will use what we call a real data type because average will normally carry a point. I'm going to store, take for example, the number of students in the class. I will use a real, sorry, I'll use an integer data type because integer that doesn't, that don't go about um, taking in consideration a point because you cannot say that you have 14.5 students in the class. You have to be 14 or have to be 15. So we say that would be of an integer data type. So whole numbers, integer, floating point numbers that, um, that is um, real, like a character, A, B, Z, dollar sign, and so on, that is of a charity type. And like for your name, which is like a, um, a, C, a number of characters coming together, that would be a string. And we have what we call Boolean, or some person refer to it as Boolean. Those that refer to um, data type as being yes or no, true or false, or false, all right? So in essence, going back to an array, when an array is basically storing information or storing data, those data have to be of the same data type, all right? And we are looking at how we deal with Pascal. I'm gonna look in more in depth into of Pascal and using it, all right? So, um. To read further, it says that uh, it is just like a small fixed number of boxes linked together, one after the other, storing things that are related to each other. An array is said to be static, static data structure because once declared its original size, that is specified by the programmer will remain the same. So take for example, and I go back to the egg tree, you realize that I um, mentioned like a box linked together with various areas to store things in it. So um, if you consider an egg tree, you have various areas linked together to store eggs inside of it. Good. So now if I have an egg tree and it, there is 12 slots in it, and I said, guess what? This egg tree is to store 12 eggs. It will remain as is. 
it will remain as 12 throughout the program. That's why we must say that it is static data structure. Once I declare it, once I say, okay, well, this is this is um egg tray to store 12 data and I start using it, it will remain to be to, to be able to store no more than 12 data. Alright. So that's why it's it basically speak up now now we will um use we'll, we'll be using the array data structure and here is how it is declared and very important and i will stress this point before you can use an array you have to first declare that array all right we have to declare it because we need to know how much areas how much storage area will this array contain we will need to know what data type or what type of data will be stored in this array very important when we are declaring our array our white is so important because before we go ahead and use our array we need to decide you need to decide how much storage area will that array contain? You need to decide what data type the array will be of. Is it going to be real? Is it going to be integer? Is it going to be string? Is it going to be char? Is it going to be boolean? You need to decide that. And that is what the declaring section is all about. You must declare your array before you can use your array okay now this is a basic structure and um, this here is just a fragment of a program so inside of your pascal you know that you would have var which suggests variable or you know um refer to areas where you basically be storing um your information whether it's a variable whether it's a kind of whether it's an array but we're looking at array in specific now so we say that an array need to have an array name and let me break it down for you so this here is the structure and this here is a specific example so we are saying that an array need let's bring it up some more we are saying that an array need to have a name so we say here array name and this is my example now i have the so therefore the name of my array is actually my array good so the name is my array i give my array name my array and if we look up top again we read that a colon is here and the colon follow in the example as well followed by the keyword array to specify guess what i am declaring an array same in the example you see the word array is there now we have our square open and close bracket and i'm going to stress this point again it is a square bracket not a curly bracket you must use a square bracket now this area decide how much areas will be allotted to this array to store the various data our data will be storing so here we have one dot dot 20 and the dot dot specified one to 20 and note it is not one dot it is two dots all right so you gotta be two dots and we close our square bracket and we say off Realize the word of continue all the way through and now I must decide my data type and the data type that I will be using is Integer good. So my data would be a integer data type and um, That is followed Or ended with a semicolon because all all statement in Pascal end with an semicolon if you observe carefully there you see i end it with a semicolon all right so what happened here just now is 
how you go about declaring an array. So therefore, if somebody asks you, what is the name of the array? The name of the array would be my array. If somebody asks you, what is the size of the array? The size of the array would be 1 to 20. If somebody asks you, what is the data type of the array? The data type would be integer. I know that integer refers to storing whole numbers. All right. If we, as you move on, you see me saying that um, an array data structure defines the size of the array and the data type that will be used for storing data, which I just explained up top just now. In the above example, the array stored up to 20 integer. That's why we, we talk about st static. We already declared, guess what? This array going to have 20 areas. So once we declare it and we start to use it, you won't be able to store 21, 22, 23 things inside of it because it remains static, it remains at what it is once you declare it and move on. However, 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 it may have used 30 integers or more. All right. So um, here we see that to assign to assign values to assign values to a particular integer of an array, we do it like this. So, um, let me create a box right here to give you a better understanding. Let me do like this. Okay. All right. So now we are seeing that what my array index five should store the number ten. So therefore, as you mentioned that um, before, an array is like a box-like structure, all right? So we have what? Index one, two, three, four, five. So therefore, in this box, we'll be storing the number 10. So let me go over it again, for you to understand clearly what's taking place. So we have here index one, two, three, four, Five. And we are seeing in my array index 5 store the number 10. So therefore 10 would be in this location. Let me change this from 25 to let oh yeah, yes, it can remain. Alright, so in this one now they are saying my array index 1 should store the number 25. So therefore, this is index 1. So therefore 25 would be stored in that location. <coughs> And um, here, below here, is basically explain what um, happened up here really. So we have the name of the array, which is my array. We have the index, for this case it would have been one, for this case it would have been five, and the value that we are storing, which we just did with the 10 and the 20, just now. All right, so let's, let's read through this array a bit all right so we are saying um reading a value from an array is done as follow we have var so therefore i'm going to declare um some storage area so i have my var my var which is a variable and i'm declaring it to be of integer data type then i have my array and you see the word big word array right here that is see i'm declaring an array so the name of my the, of the array is my array and the size is one to five, and it's of, of integer data type, and you end here with your semicolon. Now we begin to say that uh, my array index two, I'm going to store the number 25 in it. All right? So therefore, just like I showed in the box up here, this would have been two, one, index one, index two. So 25 would be in here based on the comparison with this one right here. So let me go over. So my array index two, so the second area of the array put in 25 in it. That's what they're saying, store it inside of it. 
and the next line we have is my var which is a variable and i am going to store what my array index 2 in it so the question is what is inside of my array index 2 inside of my array index 2 you would have, you'd have the variable you'd have the value 25 so what happened now is that 25 would actually go inside of inside of um my var let me create a box quick here just to show you that for a better understanding just in case we don't get that all right so here so this right here let me copy this put this right here i'm just doing this just for um demonstration for you to get a better understanding so this right here one two three four five let me remove this one. Let me delete this one. Good. So one, two, three, four, five areas. Good. So this is area one. This is two. This is three and would have continued all the way to five. So we are saying now in my in my array index two, which is right here, I'm going to put 25 inside of it. That is what this is saying right here. Now below that it is saying that I should I should uh, I should go ahead and let my var be equal to my array index 2 so therefore my array index 2 value is 25 so to write this a next way what is basically saying let me take this down what is basically saying i should let 25 go inside of my my var let me see if i can bring this up so you can see so you can get a better comparison good so both of this they are saying the same thing why are they saying the same thing because in my array index 2 which is right here it can right here it contains 25 so therefore i am simply saying let 25 now goes in go inside of my var that is what it is saying generally okay now here i have some examples that you can go through for practice first you're going to declare an array called score you're going to declare an array called score and score declare an array called score to store to store students average you can decide on the number or the size of the array for yourself all right next we have declare an array called name and the array called name should store student's name you can decide on the data um the self array yourself and the third one is a declare an array called age to store students age and you can decide on the size of it now for the fourth one we have store store 15 in the third location in the age array so you're going to store 15 in the third location in the age array all right so uh we have now come to the end of this tutorial i hope that you have developed some understanding of an array and what an array is really about all right so please subscribe and follow and stay tuned you will see in some upcoming tutorials as we move more in depth in array